Hey, welcome back to Performance Motorsports Internet TV. Today we're at the I 40 Dragway in Crossville, Tennessee, and we have the junior dragsters in house. Man, these kids are awesome and fast and got some great looking rides. Stay tuned, and we're going to show you some footage later on in the show. It's come the time for us to provide this information to you right here on your computer. great day here at the I-40 Dragway. These junior dragster competitors are surely impressive. Now, for the most part, these cars are straight body cars, and the majority of them are composite, kind of like the top fuel dragsters that they're modeled after. But as you can see behind me, these guys take their racing seriously. Now, there's another group of guys that take things seriously, and that's the metal hot rodder. These guys don't like body filler. They don't go for fiberglass. They're true hardcore metal guys. Well, we have an opportunity to visit with John Glover, master craftsman with the English Wheel Metal Shaper, and over the next few episodes, we're going to be sh showing his video on how to build Model A fenders out of metal. Now, you may say, how build Model A fenders is going to help me? I've got a 57 Chevy. But if you look at the process that he goes through, cutting the patterns, fitting the patterns, using the English wheel, using hand tools to form this metal, it's going to help you out to build and repair and restore your metal hot rod. Let's go to the shop and check out and see what John's doing. Welcome to my workshop. This demonstration is the making of a Model A Fender. It has been chosen because it covers a good range of shapes and features that you may want to do. An experienced panel beater could probably complete this job in approximately 40 to 50 hours. Obviously, we cannot put this much on video, but our objective is to demonstrate a method of developing the many different shapes. With this understanding, we will start the demonstration. Let's go to the fender for details. Let's point out the details that we're going to encounter. 
Along the edge here, from the front to the towel, on this side, the outside, we have a wired edge, then we have an offset or a juggle. We have a bulbous shape here, and then the skirt section, we have two different shapes. We have this reverse shape here. Now we don't want to make this panel in one piece, that will be too difficult. So we have to decide where we're going to divide the panel to make our separate pieces. The dotted lines indicate where I had chosen. We have a bulbous shape here with that reverse shape there. If we have them in the same panel while we're making the hole, we have to put that shape in and we're locked in while we're trying to get this and it just isn't practical. Plus the fact it's too large, we should maintain a panel that is under 36 inches. I'll pick this up, we can see the lines that we have on it. The dotted lines indicate where we have chosen to weld. This panel here has a nice general shape. This panel here has a flat here with a little bulbous piece here and we have a flat here and a raised piece here. This is, would be difficult if we had it in with this piece. So for practical purposes there is our cut line here. We've just spoken about this bulbous shape and this reverse shape here. We've d decided on the dividing line here. Now we have another feature here. It is an accent line. It's just sunk slightly with about 10 degrees and 5 degrees along its length. We cannot weld on the line itself. The line would be too difficult to maneuver and shape and get straight if the weld was on it and we can't do nothing with it. We could have the weld 3 eighths of an inch to either side. I've chosen on this side because we have a flatter feature here than here. There's a little bulbous shape here and it's easier to dress on that side. Another point to think of is that here we're higher on the panel and it's more visible. It's an eye catcher. So for cosmetic purposes as well, we put it on the lower side. Towards the end here on this towel panel, on this bulbous shape, there are two deep to do all the way to the side, so we have two cheek panels, one on the towel panel, one on the front nose panel. These are panels that are relatively easy to do, but they save a lot of work. And the amount of welding and dressing is uh, very negligible if you take into account the time you're saving, if you've made the panel in one piece. As you can see, we have seven panels now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a flat panel. The welding is up past the radius into this area. There's a slight shape here. That weld is easier to dress on this shape panel than on the flat panel, which is why we come around the bend here. If we go to the board, we can discuss this in more detail. Here we have the three views showing the join lines of the seven pieces. Here we have the two cheeks, the two main top panels, that's the saddle panel, the, the two skirt panels and the final number seven panel, the mountain panel at the end here. The panel, they're all a manageable size, they're not over 36 inches long. seven paper patterns, they're laid out on a sheet of clean metal the side we have our seven panels, they're all cut out. The next stage now is to form all the panels to the model. We discuss this panel. <coughs> this panel, most of the shape is in this area. It's deceptive and it has more shape than you'd realize. We can check it by rocking a yardstick across. It really has a bunch of shape and it seems to be concentrated in this area. As you can see, things are starting to wind down at the I-40 Dragway here in Crossville, Tennessee for the Junior Dragster Competition. I believe I'm going to call it a day two. I hope you guys have had as much fun this episode as I have, and I'd like to say a special thank you to Jim Howe of the I-40 Dragway and all the competitors of the Junior Dragster event. I hope to see you soon on more episodes of Performance Motorsports Internet TV.